let's talk about data-driven testing, which is a method for writing tests where the test data is provided through some external source. You may also know it as parameterized testing, and I'm going to show you all the ways you can write parameterized tests with XUnit. I have the stock keeping unit value object here, and we're going to start off by writing some simple tests for this value object. We're going to start off by testing two cases. When we pass in a null or empty string, the create method returns null. And when we pass a string that is not exactly 15 characters long, we also get back a null value. So let's start by writing our tests. I already prepared a domain unit test project, which is where the tests for our domain project are going to live. I'm going to add a feature folder inside that is going to match the feature folders that I have in the original domain project. So in this case, the stock keeping unit belongs to the products feature folder, and I'm going to add these queue tests inside of this folder. So I'm going to create a new class, which will be skew tests. Let me show you how we can write parameterized tests. So the basic way to write a test in X unit is by starting off with the fact attribute, and then you can write the body of your test. For the test naming conventions, I prefer using something like this, where I say thing under test, and then I say should, and then I say expected result. The expected result is a variable, so I'm going to add it in brackets, and the thing under test is also a variable, and it changes from test to test, and should is the only constant. So I want to test the create method. So this is my thing under test, and then I say should, and then I say what is the expected result. So create should return null, and then I can introduce additional conditions if I want to, for example here as another variable, so conditions. So we can say create should return null, and we can add a condition by adding when or if, let's say when value is null. So I'm going to write my test quickly. I like to use the arrange act assert format to write my tests. And I'm going to add my value, which is going to be null, as the test case says. So the value is null. We checked the skew that we get back from skew create, and we pass it the value. And in the end, we assert that the skew that we got back from the create method is null. Let's try to run the test that we just wrote. So I'm going to say run. This is going to execute my test. And you can see that my test passes. Awesome. This covers the is null part here. So let's do another test for the is empty. I'm going to copy this and we're going to change when value is empty. We're going to replace the null here with string empty. And obviously this is now not necessary. We can use var. So let's again write both of our tests and ideally they should all pass. The problem here is that our two tests are incredibly similar. In fact, you could say they are identical. The only thing that changes is the value. So this is where parameterized tests come in. So how you can write a parameterized test is you need to replace the fact attribute with theory. And then you can provide some data source that is going to provide your test arguments or parameters. So the simplest approach is using inline data. You can specify your test data inside of this attribute. The downside is you are only allowed to use constant values. So we can pass in null for our first test, and we can also pass in string empty for the second test. Now, because string empty is a static field, you can't use it. You have to go through the route of specifying a hard-coded empty string. I'm going to get rid of the second test here, and we're going to rename our test slightly. So create should return null when value is null or empty so that we cover both cases. And you can introduce a value argument, which is a nullable string, to represent the value that we are passing to the skew create. Now, obviously, we don't have an arrange step anymore. You can leave it if you prefer to, or you can remove it since it does nothing. And let's try to run our parameterized test this time. So I'm going to run it, and both tests pass. This is the simplest approach to write data-driven tests with X unit, and I'm going to show you some additional approaches that are more robust and also support non-constant values. 
I'm going to explain the next approach to writing parameterized tests by using this condition where we check that the value has to have a length of 50. So let's write that test. I'm going to make it a theory. I'm going to leave out the parameters just for a moment and we're going to say create should return null. I'm going to add a condition that is going to say when value length is invalid. This is going to be a string and I'm not going to make it nullable because I want to give it a concrete value. And I'm going to use the act and the search step from our previous test. So we're not going to be using the inline data approach, rather we're going to use the member data approach. How member data works is it expects a name for the public static member that is going to provide the test data. So let's create our public static member. It can be a field returning i enumerable and the constraint is that you have to return an array of objects. So we're going to say invalid skew length data. We can make it a field or a property. Let's say we want to return a new list of objects and we're going to use the list initializer and inside we're going to provide the individual values for the array of objects. So let's create a new object array and we're going to pass in the individual values. So let's say invalid skew. I'm pretty sure this is not the correct length and let's provide a few more. So this is going to be invalid skew one and invalid skew two. The proper name to pass the name of your member is by using the name of operator. If you rename this member at a future time, your tests will not break. So I'm going to attempt to execute my second set of tests and let's see if they pass. So they're all green and you can see we have three test cases for each of the values that we provided here. Now you don't have to use a static field you can also do a property. So I'm going to add a property that returns the same values. And if I replace the test here and execute my tests again, you'll see that they all pass. And this time we are using the property. And another version that you can do with member data is using a method. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to make this into a method that returns the new list through the expression syntax. If I try to use the method this time and attempt to execute my tests, ideally they're all going to pass and they do. So these are the three versions how you can use member data. You can use a static field, a public static property or a public static method and they all have to return an I enumerable containing an array of objects where each value matches the parameter that you want to pass to your test. If you've been paying attention, You'll notice that none of these approaches are ideal. With inline data, you can only use constant values at compile time and you can't dynamically provide your test arguments. With the member data approach, it's slightly better because this is a function. You could write, let's say, a for loop and try to generate your test cases. So it's better in that regard. But the problem is you have to return an array of objects and you lose strong typing because you're working with objects and you can pass anything in and that's going to compile and you're going to find out that you have a problem when you try to run your tests. So this is not ideal and this is where the next approach that I'm going to show you comes in. I'm going to create another folder for our tests and this time this is going to be the orders feature folder. Let's add a class that is going to hold my order tests and I'm going to write a test for creating an order. So let's make this public and I'm going to write a theory test and I'm going to show you how we're going to provide the data in just a moment. So the test is going to be public void and let's say create should raise domain event. So order create is going to raise a domain event. I'm going to write the act step and we're going to get back an order from the order create method and we expect to get a customer ID. I'm going to accept the customer ID as the argument from our test. So this is going to be the customer ID and we're going to pass it to order create. And in the assert step, I'm going to check that the order domain events contains a order created domain event instance. I can use many assertions. I'm going to use the not empty one and I'm going to pass it order get domain events of type order created domain event. 
this collection should not be empty if the order was created properly. Now let's focus on this part here, how we can provide a strongly typed customer ID. We could use the member data approach that I just showed you earlier, but I'm going to show you an interesting approach using a class data. So for this, we create another class that is going to hold our tests. So let's call it order create test data or data, whatever you want to call it. Of course, this has to be a class and I'm going to inherit from the theory data class. This is a generic class that can have quite a few generic arguments. Each generic argument is supposed to represent one parameter in your parameterized test. So the first argument and the only one that we're going to need is the customer ID. So if I create this class and how I provide the actual test data is through the constructor, I have access to the add method, which is going to expect for me to provide a customer ID. So I can say new customer ID and provide it with a new GUID value. So if I were to add another argument here for let's say another customer ID and maybe a string, and I can even say, give me a decimal, you're going to see that I'm getting a compiler here because the add method now expects four arguments, the customer ID, another customer ID, a string and a decimal. So this is a great way to get strong typing and be able to provide parameters for your tests. Let's revert back to the original version and how you actually use the order created test data is inside of the class data attribute you provided by calling the type of operator and you can specify order create test data. X unit is going to wire this up and let's attempt to run our order create test and you can see that it passes I think XUnit is great for writing parameterized tests with the inline data, member data, and class data options for providing your parameters. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. My preferred approach is using class data in combination with theory data to get the benefit of strong typing. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and take a look at the video that you can see here. And until next time, stay awesome.